So National Review has a pretty good and insightful article about uh, the student loan uh, uh, issue, uh, why Democrats want to uh, forgive it. And I believe that, I mean, I always knew that the student loan thing was comp the, the college, the prices of education kept rising because it was the cheap student loans that people could borrow and ever increasing student loans that the government just spend more and more money on it. That, that is pretty, pretty damn obvious. Um, but now it seems even more clear why they let it uh, get this way because it serves the left. I mean, this is basically a purely political play and the article will get into it. Um, basically, it starts off saying well, the Democrats are about to uh, not do so well in the midterms, but they have a last-ditch effort, which is uh, do some kind of student loan relief to uh, throw voters a bone, so <laughs> kind of bribe themselves uh, out of complete electoral loss. But the article says the case for college loan forgiveness is not economic. The median bar spends less than 4% of his income on payments it's purely political the relatively well off urban and suburban professionals who are responsible for disproportionate share of student debt have democrats ear and people who are actually poor do not in part democrats are confident that poor communities votes can be secured through other means and the people at the last stop at the college loan money train universities personnel whose jobs are funded by student debt are powerful constituencies themselves and this is a hundred percent true and I wonder if it wasn't if we didn't have these bullshit government uh, student loans that you can't default on that didn't check your major for if it was a private company that giving you a loan they'll check your ability to repay they would check your major if you if you're actually getting uh, a degree in a major where you, you have the ability to pay like there's actually jobs waiting for you what any of this wokeness or any of this cancer that's spreading throughout the united states would any of this really exist yeah sure there'll be some people doing critical race theory or whatever here and there and they're like you know in the english departments but but no but not to this extent it wouldn't be as prominent. Um, the CRT and this woke, it's, it has a very, I mean, they're, they're proclaimed Marxists, or the BLM group, so this definitely has an aura around it that it, it's funded by government in you know, a large yes. And in the real world, where you had to do something productive, you actually had to produce a good or service for people. I mean, this type of ideas would just wouldn't even survive. So it has like a, a fake petri dish where these uh, ideas can fester. And yes, that's what's, what's what these universities have become. Uh, the article continues: People go to college, not surprising, surprised to learn, relatively well off. Even those who go to college and fail to get a degree are, earn more money than those who do not go to college at all. A student debt is disproportionately a problem for affluent people. So the amount of student debt held by top 25% of households by income is almost three times held by the bottom 25% of household income. So... Talk about the expensive majors. That is why you don't hear Democrats talking about the very much about the dire economic straits of high school dropouts. Who are the people who actually have it worse economically? If we want to spend public money to provide debt relief to the needy people, we probably would be better off paying the mortgage of mortgages of low income home homeowners or giving a fresh start to poor families with a few thousand dollars in unpaid credit card bills. Oh, 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 I mean, this guy was on such a good track as far as 
identifying the issues with government giving people money. But yet, I mean, this is National Review. They're not, they're better than the Democrats, but they're not really solid on economics. So, of course, you'd be just throwing out like, well, why don't just the government just, well, it's giving, I mean, it's like you clearly see what, what kind of problems just free money from the government causes. So why would you, why, why are you suggesting to misdirect, you know, taxpayer funds to pay off credit card bills so people can run up again? Like what? What a joke. Better still, bailing out those with unpaid bank debts, which though usually small in dollar amount terms, can have ruinous effects on households' finances. Oh yeah, so the banks can, uh, if the banks know that the government's paying people's debts off, they can hike fees and hike all these bank debts. Great. That would be a better policy, but it that would be a better policy, but it would be war. Uh, but it what what? But it would be worse poli politi politics. Ah, I get it. Okay. So screw the poor. There are hungry young lawyers that need our assistance. But again, this is. A lot of people who are suffering from the student loan stuff. I don't think they're young lawyers. Because a lawyer, I mean, even though you're not, you don't, if you get a law degree and you're not, you just don't want to work in a law firm because it's not what you thought it would be. With a law degree, your, your aptitude, you can get some other high paying job for sure. The people that are suffering with this are liberal arts uh right english majors that have no uh uh just uh, you know underwater basket weavers as it turns out college debt is so correlated with income that it's difficult to design a loan forgiveness program that does not disproportionately benefit high income households uh yeah so they go into the figures. It's obviously why you you are forgiving. You know, the, the higher debt you have, the, usually the more well off you are, because rich people love to load themselves up with these degrees. Um, Gail Collins writing with her usual almost pristine ignorance in the New York Times offers a very fine example of how. Muddle-headed progressives are on this issue. First, she praises President Joe Biden for pushing back the next uh, student loan repayment deadline. This saved you well, the cosmic you, $5 billion a month in interest alone. Well, the problem with, with this line of thinking is that those interest payments were not only owed by someone, they were owed to someone. Another con constituency with that cosmetic you. This isn't cost-free debt relief, but transfer of wealth from taxpayers including low income taxpayers to people who borrow money and go to college as noted above people who borrow money and go to college are relatively high income group and here's the thing you want this is you want the free market to work here you want the people who load themselves up with tons of student debt and not able to repay it because they got a, a useless major this, it, while it sucks for that person, this is a very valuable example to other people. So other people can learn that lesson and avoid these colleges and maybe just learn it like a, like a trades, become an electrician or something, or find ways, get an internship at a company you want to work on and work your way up. And those people are going to prosper. And now the society has different examples for what, you know, for which road people should go down to. The people who accu accumulated all this debt should not be bailed out. I mean, the moral hazard is pretty crazy. And do, like, do they have the political will? Even if they are hypothetically bailed out, just like once in a lifetime. Like, okay, if they are bailed out then the college situations will keep going more and more and more because they know once every now and again democratic administration will be elected and wipe away your college loans, college debt. So, I mean, that the 
that causes that causes a dependence <laughs> that causes that the people to vote for Democrats more often. So I can see how it will politically benefit them. But then colleges will understand that too. Everything, all the tuition will go up. Yeah, the moral hazard is incredible. And on top of that, they don't have. If even if they did, if they did, if they did a one-time thing, and then we're going to nationalize in all co- higher education, but that's not going to happen. They don't have the political willpower to completely change student loans or colleges, so nobody will ever get another uh, you know government-funded student loan ever again. And within that group, the people with higher incomes have larger loans. Yeah, okay. And that's the shame for college because the facts in the case are actually pretty interesting. Uh, there are two candidates for debt forgiveness and the high income borrowers come out on top on both of them. The first way to calculate the value of the debt forgiveness is to rely on the simple loan balance, 20000 and loan forgiveness worth 20 k in that uh, version. But reality is more complicated. For one thing, low-income borrowers already enjoy debt forgiveness through income-based repayment, a scheme which eligible border borrowers pay a certain percentage of their income towards the loan for a certain amount of years, at the end of which, at the end of which the remaining balance is dismissed. Forgiving 20 k loan isn't really worth 20 k in that case if a borrower who's actually going to be required to pay only 8000 yeah, yeah. We already have some pretty good models for educating students without burdening them with debt. It costs a lot of money to educate a Princeton undergraduate. And the students who attend that school are far from universally wealthy. Yet 83% of Princeton undergraduates finish with no debt, debt, debt at all. And those who do borrow money... Uh, graduate with an average of about 9,400 in debt. A Princeton degree is more than a, uh, than a decade to pay off a loan amount to one-third the price of a Toyota Camry. It's not a terrible deal. Of course, the Ivy League schools have large endowments, but there isn't any real reason to saddle students at the state schools with much debt either. Uh, he goes into consider my alma mater. Basically, he, he goes uh, uh, talks about University of Texas. The student population. Oh, nine uh, percent of the uh, budget, the school's budget came from tuition. Um, years later, the amount of students declined, and now twenty percent uh, of the school's budget is made out of tuition. Here's one thing to understand. High levels of student debt have not been driven by raising uh, tuition. Raising tuition has been enabled by high levels of student debt. Obviously, the market for college degree is a lot like a market for cars. If you if you can connect buyers with cheap credit, then you can raise prices. You will have noticed that a car dealer ads on the radio almost inevitably talk about prices in the term of monthly payment rather than total cost. And nobody's better at offering cheap credit than the U.S. government. So another way to think about the situation, student loans are a form of political money laundering, a way of spending money on an important political constituency, university, faculty, and staff without accounting for that spending as spending in the budget. The government writes a college a check, then that as an expenditure, if the government makes a loan, then that is, uh, in accounting purposes, an asset. We have spent a gener- uh, generation using college students as mules to haul money to universities that function as employment programs for the democratic activists and political foot soldiers. That's why explosion of university budgets has been driven not by the cost of the classroom education, but ad- uh, administrative expenses. Bravo. This is... I understood the, <laughs> that the student loan thing was fucked up, but this this really exposes it right here. It's just basically funneling money to universities and their their uh, and their allies, 
and the how do they what do you call them political foot soldiers they have been a lot more associate deans of students that we're used to and those jobs are filled overwhelmingly overwhelmingly by people who are politically culturally and economically associated with the democratic party even in the relatively conservative states such as texas the political donations of people associated with the universities run 10 to 1 in favor of democrats debt forgiveness is just the last step in trying to hide where the money went so if a commercial bank may loads anybody the way the u.s government does college students with no regard for credit credit worthiness or ability to repay reg regulars would shut it down well I mean, here's the big difference people just the, the regulate regulators don't need to shut it down people just start defaulting and that program would end here's it but the thing is this is special you can't default on these loans we are comprehensively irresponsible with our standards when it comes to federal student loans. Not because cheap money ultimately helps students, which it doesn't, but because it puts money into the pockets of people with important and powerful political connections. Seen from the point of view, Uncle Sam is the number one predatory lender in the country. If you want young people to have less debt, then there is an easy first step. Stop lending them money. Turn off the spigot and see the water uh, uh, stops rising. Long term, our policy, uh, policy should deal more forthrightly with the fact that there are several distinct and only loosely related activities that uh, go under the age, ages of higher education. Education for its own sake, job training and research. Each of those is valuable in its own way. And each should enjoy some level of government support. Uh, again, damn it. National Review. You have to have, I mean, you can't just do a clean break. In some cases, more generous support. Uh, here we go. And more intelligently administered than we will offer now. But we should, but you're just contradicting yourself. This whole, your, this whole article, you understand that. The way it's administered is it's giving money to it. The government is giving money to its political allies. So this, whatever he's like, uh, fund, more funding for, you know, research or whatever. Yeah, this research funding is just going to be get diverted to political allies we should we should be unsentimental in making distinctions among these activities and deploy our limited resources programmatically or we could keep burning students with debt and using them as collective human slush funds for the benefit of reliable democratic voters and reliable democratic donors yeah i think he's right <laughs> 